so margarita pizza is by far the most popular pizza in the world, it's gotta be. Super easy to make, three main ingredients, basil, mozzarella, and of course, some great homemade tomato sauce. So I have my pizza dough kind of shaped here. I love kind of rustic, just misshaped pizza doughs. They're like clouds. They all have different shapes to me. I always kind of decide what they look like. This is like the head of a bear. I don't know why, but they always look more homemade that way. So I always start with just a little bit of olive oil right on the bottom, and this just builds a really great crust. All right, and I'm just gonna kind of rub that through all the way to the end. Get a little bit sloppy with this. You don't wanna just kind of miss a spot. Every inch counts here. Awesome. Then from up high, some kosher salt. Perfect. And then this is really, really important. You know, especially in America, we tend to overdress our pizzas. And in Italy, it's kind of like a salad, right? You've had really soggy salads. You can have a really soggy pizza too. So you just want enough of that sauce to kind of kiss the pizza, just kind of evenly go throughout, right? It's not so much about the sauce. I mean, you work so hard on that dough, it's a little bit more about the dough and what's on top of it. So some really good buffalo mozzarella. I just like to tear it. Again, we love cheese, but just kind of use it sparingly. Dot that around. Awesome, every inch. What you want to think of is that every bite you have a little bit of everything. All right, some basil, big ones I like to tear up and just kind of let them fall where they will. The small ones leave whole. Looks absolutely gorgeous, just tear it right off. This is not the time to bust out the dry basil, by the way, you have to use fresh basil for this. And the reason why everyone loves this in Italy and they're so proud of it is look at the colors. You've got the red, the green, and the white. What does that remind you of? The Italian flag. Genius, okay. I always build it on a piece of parchment like this because that way I don't have to worry about it sticking to the counter. No, you know, cornmeal, no extra flour. I like it just the way it is. I take my pizza peel, slides right on, and before I take it to the oven, just a drizzle of olive oil. And my oven's at 500 degrees. It's as high as it goes. I have a pizza stone that's been in there the entire, maybe an hour, two hours, a long, long time. So I'm just gonna open that up slide it in on the paper and let that pizza do its thing. All right, so oven's been on full whack. It's been about seven minutes. I'm gonna check my pizza. Oh yeah, beautiful. You can tell by underneath, that's what you're looking for, that nice golden crust. So you can see the paper didn't burn, it just kind of browned a little bit. I just kind of hold it with my thumb and let the pizza kind of just fall off. And then while it's hot, this is my favorite moment. It's finishing up this margarita. So I'm just gonna paint with really good olive oil around the outside just to give it this nice sheen, all right? And then, you know, we don't have brick oven pizza ovens in our home, so I have a little smoked salt, which is really nice around the end. It kind of makes the whole thing smell a little bit more authentic. And then you cannot serve a pizza without a little bit of that salty, creamy Parmesan Reggiano right over the top. Look at that. Just kind of let it fall over. Not too much, just enough. And if you like margarita pizza, nothing will beat that. All right, so a Neapolitan pizza is typically a thin crust pizza. It's kind of what we're used to. You don't want it so thin where it's flimsy, enough where it kind of holds its shape. And typically, traditionally, there's not a lot of cheese on this. So I'm doing kind of an oregano, garlic, and just simple tomato sauce, Neapolitan style here. So I'm gonna start with some olive oil right on the top of the crust. It's my raw dough here. This olive oil is gonna help it stay super crispy really lush, a little bit fatty. This is exactly what you want at the beginning of every pizza, all the way to the edges. So just a little bit of salt just from up high. Awesome. And then a little bit of tomato sauce. We're not gonna overdo it with the tomato sauce. A lot of the times we like to really glob it on there, but in Naples, trust me, it's just enough. That's all they want, just to kind of accentuate the bread. Awesome. So a lot of sliced garlic. This just kind of sprinkled throughout. Look at that, perfect. And then a good amount of fresh oregano right over the top. Beautiful. Who says you need cheese? This is great. All right, so pizza right here. Now I always build it on a little piece of parchment paper. 
The parchment really makes it so it doesn't stick to the counter. It's a really good insurance policy when you're trying to take the pizza to the oven. I'm gonna grab my peel here, slide it right on. This pizza is gonna go in the oven 500 degrees for about seven to eight minutes right on the pizza stone. So take it right to the stone, slide it on the paper, on the stone, and forget about it. So it's been about seven to eight minutes, full whack for my Neapolitan pie. Let's take a look at it. Yes, exactly what I'm looking for, right? So I always do the same thing. The parchment's kind of done its job, so I just hold that tight, let the pie fall right out. Then, you always have to finish it while it's hot. So I grab a little bit of really good olive oil and paint the outsides. Beautiful, look at that shine it gives, a little bit of richness. And then some good flaky smoked salt all the way around. And then of course, the real deal, a little bit of Parmesan. I know it's not so traditional in the Neapolitan world, but hey, who doesn't like a little creamy, salty Parmesan on there? So that is a classic Neapolitan pizza. All right guys, so I've been to Sicily a ton, and uh, for some reason, their pizza is not circular like what we're used to. It actually pulls up on the square dimension. So, really easy to get this shape. You start with your round, and you kind of just roll out both ways, right? And just go lengthwise first, right? And kind of achieve that before anything else. And then, you just kind of roll the side out, as much as you like. So it kind of takes on more of a, a square or rectangle look as opposed to round. And you can always kind of help it. So typically it would be about this thick or even a little thicker. They can even, you know, put an inch thick into a pan and they bake it for a long time. And it's more of like focaccia. But this is how I'm pulling mine off today. So I've been to Sicily a ton, like I said, and there is fennel everywhere. They love their anchovies, and lemon is just like huge. It's like groundbreaking there, it's amazing. So, what we're gonna do with this is a little bit of olive oil, and the next move before I even do anything is I'm going to actually put it right on some parchment. Beautiful. What the parchment does is allow the oil, before I start spreading it around, not to keep it sticking to the board. It kind of acts as like an insurance policy, you'll see. It will be able to roll under a peel that much easier. So I need the oil all the way to the outside. Awesome. And we're gonna start with just a little bit of anchovy. If you don't like anchovy, you know, don't worry about it, but I honestly think it's a game changer. I'm not a huge fan either, but they kind of melt into the pizza. You forget they're even there, so like six or seven anchovies, and you just kind of want to break these apart, spread them around. They are pretty potent, so just enough, right? I have a little bit of fennel. Let's kind of let that dance throughout. Awesome. And I'm going to take some of their fronds. This is what grows on top of the fennel bulb. Just kind of rip these up, and just kind of sprinkle those from up high. Get it all nice and messy. Love it. All right. And then I'm going to grab a lemon and just use the zest. So I'm gonna grab a little microplane and just kind of grab as much of that beautiful zest as I can. And I might even, just for some extra flavor, grab just a squeeze, just a kind of kiss of the lemon. That looks great. Ton of Parmesan. Listen, I can't really do it without. Awesome. So this is gonna go in the oven for about seven to eight minutes, 500 degrees, and keep the paper right on the stone. All right, so I can smell the fennel, the anchovies in the air, and Sicily has taken over my kitchen. So I'm gonna check my pizza. Beautiful, so you kinda got, this is a little baby pizza. It's always best to keep a small pizza at home. Don't try and do a big pie, it's a lot harder. We don't have that much heat. But this is my little mini square pizza. Beautiful. So you can see you got the fennel, you got the melted anchovy, the lemon zest, it smells amazing. With this one, this isn't so traditional, but I like to do it. I like to top a little bit of fresh fennel, a little bit of squeeze of lemon and some salt. This is gonna finish the whole thing. But before we do that, we have to do the traditional and seasoning, which is a paint of good extra virgin olive oil all the way around the crust. Nice smoked salt, just to hit it up, all right? And some good Parmesan. That looks awesome. And to finish this guy up, a little bit of this lemon, kind of zippy fennel, 
just kind of dotted throughout. Smells gorgeous, looks insane, and it will whisk you to Sicily. This is a Sicilian style pizza. All right, so Chicago style pizza, really simple to make. And when you think about pizza pie, this is what you have to think about because this is actually built like a pie. So a lot of people like to use cake pans. I actually really dig to use cast iron. Cast iron is really even heat throughout. It's cheap, find it anywhere, and it looks really sexy too. So we're gonna start with, it's kind of, it's a totally cool, we didn't preheat it or anything. Just a little bit of olive oil, the bottom of that pan, and just kind of get it all over. This is just gonna help with stickage, right? Any extra oil, just go right on top of your pizza, and just kind of rub it in all the way through. This is gonna kind of make an unctuous dough, keep it nice and crisp. So then I'm just gonna take this whole pizza and put it right on top. All right? And I'm just gonna let the edges kind of fall where they may. Again, this is like making a pie. All right? So we're gonna get all those in, right? Any extra edges, just kind of fold behind it. Just kind of press up. No one's really gonna see the inside of the dough, so it's okay if that looks a little bit scrappy. The outside is what counts here. Awesome. So you have this nice little bed, and you really wanna kinda of reach it all the way to the top. It's so much like making a pie. All right, beautiful. Big pinch of salt. Now, what's cool about Chicago-style deep dish pizza is that normally with any other type of pizza, the sauce goes on first, but with Chicago-style, the sauce goes on last. And the reason why is because this is gonna take like 25 minutes to bake at about 425 degrees, which means that anything on top, it's gonna be in there too long and it will burn. So the tomato sauce actually acts as kind of like a little barrier. So this, I have a little bit of sausage. I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle that throughout. Right, some caramelized onions, absolutely gorgeous, fantastic. I've got a little bit of mozzarella that I'm just gonna tear and just dot throughout. It's awesome, lots of cheese in this. It's Chicago, we gotta do it right. Beautiful. And then just a touch more of basil. You can use oregano, you can use any nice soft herb. Beautiful. So that's our base, now, I grab a little bit of our homemade tomato sauce, and this is just gonna go right on top. And it seems kind of, seems a little weird, right? To kind of just spoon sauce over the top of your beautiful toppings. But again, it kind of shields the heat from the ingredients, so nothing burns. Awesome, tuck that little basil leaf down. Beautiful, and then I just kind of spread that around. Awesome. And this is gonna get one more little touch of olive oil. Beautiful. So 425 degrees for about 25 minutes until the outsides kind of curl up around the middle and it's gonna come out really crispy on the bottom. Hard shell, beautiful. All right, so it's been about 25 minutes, 425 degrees. Let's check out our Chicago deep dish here. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. The toppings are just set, a nice crust throughout, nice and brown. And the only way to really unmold this is to let it set up and grab a little spatula. But I'm gonna dig in right away. And if you olive oiled it enough, you'll see it's an easy, easy release right out onto the counter. That looks awesome. You can see it's cooked throughout. That is exactly what you're looking for. So I finished this off just like any other pizza. Lots of olive oil on the outside to give it a little bit of a sheen little richness, some smoked salt right around, and then my good friend Parmesan Reggiano right over the top. Hey, if you like things a little thicker and a little bit more pie-like, check out a Chicago deep dish pizza.